Welcome to Life Squared, brought to you by the Perfectly Imperfect Network, from imperfect folk everywhere. Hello, thank you for joining us at the Perfectly Imperfect Paths, brought to you by the Perfectly Imperfect Network. And from all of our friends here in the United States and family, and also our Canadian family. Today, we're in the kitchen, and we're talking about sodium. Everybody knows you're not supposed to have too much sodium. But do you really know what happens if you continually overuse the salt shaker? And actually, the salt shaker isn't even your worst culprit. But we're going to talk a little bit about it, because recently, Eddie and I have given up sodium. Now, we thought we were watching it before, and we were behaving ourselves pretty well. But Eddie had a little situation pop up a few months ago. Yes, I did. Went to the doctor to have a checkup because I had a stint put in two years ago, and they told me that I was in great shape, my heart rate was good, except that my sodium level was really too high. And so not to want to have any more health problems, we decided to do something about that. And this is when we really learned what sodium does. Exactly. We thought we were behaving. And then we figured out how we were layering it. And we were getting it in foods we really didn't think about getting it in. You know? And so... We are really big on doing cart cheatery boards. We love them. We love the meat, the cheese, the vegetables. It's a very low carb option. See, we got a little carried away watching our carbs and we got our sodium too high because cheese, cheese has a lot of salt. Now, it, we didn't really think about cheese having a lot of sodium. Now, is one of the main ingredients on the charcuterie board. Also, <laughs> deli meats, luncheon meats, Italian meats. We love Italian meats. They're very high in sodium. Sure, once a week, we were laying it on. We even had our gluten-free parcel chips that were supposed to have less sodium. And they do have less sodium. But less sodium still can mean layering. We like potato chips. We eat a keto sandwich sometimes for lunch, and we have a few potato chips, just a few. And what we were doing was layering our sodium. You're supposed to have about 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. Now, we're not doctors, so if your doctor says you're supposed to have something else, please listen to your doctor. We also weren't thinking about tomato products. Canned tomatoes, salsas, sauces, I mean, they are loaded for sodium. Yeah. So, as we sort of started to figure this out and do better, we also learned that just about everything you fear over 40 can be affected by the sodium you, you, you put in your mouth. And I am talking about high blood pressure, which we just talked about, cardiovascular diseases, stroke. Um, it also will help, uh, watching your cholesterol will help lower your LDL and your cholesterol level. It lessens your chance of a brain aneurysm. Are you kidding me? It protects your vision, your kidneys, diabetes, dementia. We all fear dementia when we start getting older. Um, it also contributes to um, hardening of the arteries, bloating and swelling, which is something that drives me crazy. If I eat too much sodium, especially at, a lot of times if we go out to eat, my eyes the next day are almost full and shut. That can be a good thing. Yeah. But, but you got to remember how cheap salt is and we all like it it tastes good restaurants need cheap seasoning so be very careful when you go out to eat 
It also helps keep your bones strong by keeping your, your sodium there. Um, a lot of people have headache issues. A lot of times that can have to do with the amount of sodium they're eating. Uh, kidney stones. I've had some kidney stones. Are you kidding me? If you tell me what will help me keep from getting kidney stones again, I'm going to do it. Uh, stomach cancer. These are all things that have been problematic when we layer the sodium to sodium levels too high. It has changed our life. Um, we have also learned to use other flavors to combat for less sodium. Right. And one of the things you can use is like olive oil, avocado oil. We love to cook. So we love to buy nice spices at the health food store. You can buy them in bulk. They don't have sodium mixed in it. They don't have salt mixed in it. Sometimes when you buy cheap salt, uh, cheap spices, you got to read the back and make sure that salt isn't first before garlic. Okay? And acids, lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice, vinegars. We have learned to really use this. And one thing about using an acid, salt is a very short-term flavor. When you add an acid, you, you lengthen the time that that flavor stays on your palate. So it's really nicer, too. And really, when you use vinegars, lemon and lime juice, those, those are not expensive to use. But we have absolutely revamped our sodium intake. How do you feel? Oh, I feel so much better. I don't have that draggy feeling. It's just like Angie said, you know, when you have too much sodium, you do feel bloated and draggy. And it's amazing how much better you feel. Plus, you, it makes the foods taste different by using these different spices and ingredients. It's like a new awakening to foods that you've eaten for a long period of time. And it's, uh, it's very rewarding for how good you will feel. Well, and maybe you taste all of the ingredients more when you have less sodium on your palate. Seems that way. Yes. I don't know. That's not scientific. That's not official. But um, try it. Try watching your sodium because it's not good enough just to live. We want to live very healthily, especially as we get older. You bet. Thanks for joining us here at Perfectly Perfect Cast. Have a great day. See ya. Bye now. We really appreciate you joining us today at Life Squared on the Perfectly Imperfect Network. To get more content, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions or feedback, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section. Thanks for watching.